What's up guys? Thank you so much for tuning in today's video. All I ask for you guys to do is if you like the video, give it a big thumbs up. It really helps me out and push my content further for more farmers and people like you to see it. it really mean a lot to me. Thanks guys. Hi there, my name is Sawyer. I'm a 20 year old farmer from Southeast Iowa. And if you're watching this video, you must be interested in farming in some kind of way. Right now we're in the middle of getting ready to plant. So right now I'm going ahead and I'm starting field work. I'm doing a little bit of tillage and I also have to deal with some pigs. Before I do anything related to farming, I like to get on my computer for the first couple hours of my day. And I like to edit videos, post social media content, get back to people on my social media, reply to emails, etc, etc. Alright, so I just got done doing all my computer stuff for the morning, so now it's time to finally head over to the farm and start choring some pigs. I think it's finally officially t-shirt weather without a sweatshirt, which I really, really love. I am kind of sick of wearing sweatshirts. I'm ready for it to be t-shirt weather and I'm loving this weather right now. It's currently 65 degrees, sunny, great conditions. It'll be perfect for when we go to the field today. But with everything good comes some things that are annoying and you don't really like to do, such as all these weeds and grass right here in front of our bin pads. I do not like this, this looks terrible. So we're gonna have to go ahead and we're gonna have to spray this with some weed killer. And also the grass is growing faster and faster every single day, it's all officially green. So that means it's, it's mowing season. And about every single week, I have to mow around all the hog buildings and the whole entire farm, which takes me, I would say, anywhere from four to six hours to do. So there's some pros and cons to everything. So the first thing I do every day is I come over here and I chore the pigs. It's very important to get to the pigs early because if there's any problems going on with the pigs, you want to get on top of them very early in the morning because if you just let it go on all day long and you get there late, something could be really messed up and you might have missed it and they could be completely out of feed or they could be a water line broke, etc, etc. Yeah, you heard me right. We're not just strictly a grain farming operation. We have three 2400 hog buildings and we raise about 16,000 pigs a year. So the first thing that I do every single morning is I come over to the hog barns and I get them chored, make sure everything's going okay, go through my daily chores. If you guys wanna see my daily chores, I made a whole separate video going really in depth on what I do in these barns every single day. But I'll give you a little bit of a breakdown in this video just to give you guys kind of a glimpse of what I do. So the first thing that I'm really looking for is the three essential things pigs need to survive. They need water, they need feed, and they need air. I make sure that the air in the room temperature is adequate for the pigs to be comfortable and happy, which right now it is. I look and make sure that the feeders have feeded them all the time and that the pigs can always eat whenever they want. And then the third thing I look for is to make sure that the waters are running. There's water in the cups, There's they have plenty of water and they can constantly drink it whenever they want. The second thing that I'm really looking for is any maintenance issues. So if anything is broken, anything needs fixed, I'll go through here, look for it, and I'll immediately try to go ahead and fix it. And if I can't fix it today, I'll write it down and then I'll get on it later during the week. The third and final thing that I'm really looking for when I'm going through these buildings is I'm looking for any pigs that look like they're falling back or they're not like the rest. And if they are, I go ahead and I get a panel and I get that pig out immediately and put him in a separate pen where a lot of the other fallback pigs are in. And we do that for multiple reasons. One, for that pig's health because it's, pigs are very territorial and they will bully the, the pigs that are falling back. They just will, they'll take out the weak link. So it's very important to get that pig out of there for its safety and health. And then also, if that pig is sick in any way, you do not want him rubbing up on other, all the other healthy pigs because he could potentially get them sick. So it's just a really good idea to get those kind of pigs out of your pens. Each one of these buildings turns around twice a year. So these pigs will take six months to grow and then we'll 
get the pigs out, power wash it, get it sanitized, all that, and then we'll get another group of pigs. And we'll do that twice a year per building. A really common question that I get is how big do you sell your pigs at? Uh, usually it's around 275 to 300 pounds we sell our pigs at. Um, that's just kind of the standard really. In our operation, the pigs are the most essential thing that we do. We have to take care of these pigs all year round, every single day, 365, seven days a week. These hog barns were designed to take care of mass quantities of pigs with less amount of labor involved. So it's really easy for me to go ahead and take care of this amount of pigs with just all the technology and how these uh, buildings are set up. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna chore the rest of the pigs. This job is a pretty repetitive job. I do about the same thing in every single barn that I go to. We have three barns to do. I have the first one done because I just went into the first one, recorded this video and then I chored it. So now I'm gonna head to this barn right straight north of us and I'm gonna chore that one. And then we have another one straight southwest of us that I have to drive to and then we'll be done with the pig work this morning. Usually it takes me four to six hours to chore all three of these buildings. Uh, I just got done choring the last one, so now it's lunchtime. I'm gonna go get lunch, probably shower because I smell like complete hog poop, and it's time to do some field work. All right, so now that all the pig stuff's done, it's time to finally get in the tractor and start chopping some stocks. In the last couple videos, I talk about the method of tillage that we use and why we do it. I'll have it come out here somewhere. You can click on that video if you really wanna know why we no-till or use this kind of tillage. We're kind of a partial till uh, operation. You know, we're mostly no-till, but the stocks, the corn ground that we're turning into bean ground and the corn on corn ground that we're, you know, doing corn again on, we like to chop up the stocks extra to really get the corn stalks mixed in with the ground and we also like to get a, lay a nice seed bed for our seed and to go about two inches because this thing only goes about two inches into the ground. That's typically where you plant your seed at is one and a half to two inches. Not everyone can do a tillage method like ours. Uh, the reason being is in some colder areas like Minnesota, you know, their ground's a lot more moist and it's a lot more colder. So the only way they can really warm up their ground temperature is by really getting into that ground and tearing it up and exposing the black dirt so that the sunlight can warm it up because if your ground is too cold and too wet you really can't plant a crop in that with us though our ground naturally is pretty warm and it doesn't hold a ton of moisture um, so it's we, we can afford to do what we do if we live somewhere else in a colder area we wouldn't be able to afford to do this method of tillage that's enough talking let's finally get in there and chop some stocks in the last video i left you guys off with me into the south our south corn on corn field um, i got about halfway done with it and i'm going to finish the other half today and then we have a little bit of corn stalks i got to chop down at the end of the creek and then we have a little bit of pat a little patch i got to finish up at north of us uh, by our site one barn so I'm hoping I can get all the stalks chopped today, and I also got to finish up some end rows right down here. But I'm, I'm hoping I can finish up chopping stalks today because planting is season is coming, and I just really like to get all that done so I'm not behind and we can just be ready to go right into planting. Driving. Let's go to work.
I talked about this in my last video, but uh, what I've been doing on this corn on corn ground is I've been lapping myself. So what I mean by that, when I get to the end, I will turn around and I'll come back right on the edge of what I just got done doing. So this Bessler is an eight row Bessler and I'll have four rows working on the stuff that I just got done. And I'll have four rows that will be chopping some new stocks that haven't even been chopped yet. So I'll give you an example. Usually right here, I'd go four rows in. So I put my middle of my tractor in the fourth row. But right now, since we're going, we're lapping ourselves, I'm gonna go to the first row right here. I'm gonna go what I just, I go right on the edge of what I just got done. I'm gonna throw my Bessler in. And then we'll go ahead and you'll see that I'm doing, I'm doing what I got done. I'm going over what I just got done but I'm also chopping some stocks I haven't done yet. And I'll just keep repeating that process over and over again, and that way we can break up what we've done already a little bit more, and then start breaking up some stuff we haven't broken up yet. We've really seen that that helps a lot with breaking it up and getting all those, chop those stocks really embedded into the soil. And we only did this on our corn on corn ground. The rest of it, we just did it regular, where we just ca I counted four rows in, and I just went. So this is taking a little bit longer, but I, I don't have to complain because this is gonna be, it's gonna pay off in the long run. So it's worth my time. Coming up on the last couple rows here, uh, so far so good. We have had like one little wet spot and uh, tractor's been able to get through it pretty well right over there. You know, you can see that waterway right there, that little rut. Um, that, that was probably the wettest spot of the whole entire field. But other than that, it's been pretty dry, perfect conditions. I couldn't be happier how the way things are going so far. After I'm done with this field, I'm gonna head south and we're gonna, there's a little, little chunk right there of corn stalks I gotta chop. Getting closer, last row, here we go. I have the end rows for the most part done. I just gotta finish the end rows at the top of this hill right here and I'm gonna go over the end rows behind me because I, turned around in those a lot so uh, I'm just gonna go over them one more time to flatten it all out and then I should be good to go. Time to hit the road Jack. On to the next one. So I've been going for a little bit. If you're wondering what this little earring is right here, because I know a lot of people give me shit about having wired headphones, but I just don't trust those AirPods. Not just, not yet. I just, I just can't, I just can't put myself to do it. And plus, they sell, out, they sell out of stock so easily. And I'm like, well, screw it. I'll just go buy another pair of wired ones. But anyway, I've been going at it for a little bit. I'm about half done with this little chunk here. This chunk is probably the most rough and hilly ground that we have so it's not the most fun to ride in but you know it needs to get done so i'm doing it uh it's still taking a little bit longer just because i'm lapping myself just like i did over there uh this is going to be corn on corn so we're just going to really try to break it up i'm hoping that i get done by 6 30 because i want to go grill some steaks with my buddies and drink some beers and that's the time that i'm going to do it so i'm hoping to get done before then it's 5 30 right now so what do you think you think i can get all that done in an hour i think i can i don't know if i'll be able to get all all the way to the end rows but um, i think i'll be able to get this big chunk done and if i have to come back tomorrow and do the end rows i will also, I'll go ahead and go do that chunk over there tomorrow if I have to, but uh, I'm probably not gonna get over, I'm not probably gonna get over to that chunk over there today just because that steak, those steaks sound really, really good, and uh, you just can't pass up a steak, you know what I mean? So, steak after being in the fields all day, that that's too good to pass up, so I'm gonna take that off.
know what I could really need right now? A freaking haircut. Come on, barbers, just open up one day. I'm, that's all I'm asking. That's all I'm asking right now. Look at my freaking hair. I don't think there's any farmer out there with longer hair than me right now, honestly. This is getting ridiculous. It's got done with the main part, now it's time to do the end rows. Oh, nothing better than stretching after a long day of being in the tractor. You know what's a better feeling though? Getting a field done. So I just got this whole chunk done right here. I didn't get to that last patch over there uh, east of me. Uh, there's just a little, probably a five acre patch right there that I have to do that I gotta chop, which won't take me long at all. But I'm going to quits a little bit earlier than I thought just because I'm trying to eat one of them steaks. So that is the day in the life of a 20 year old farmer at This Will Do Farm. Pig work in the morning, and then field work in the afternoon, depending on what season we're in. If you guys like the video at all, please give it a big thumbs up. It really helps me out, push my content further for more farmers and people like you to see it. If you guys like me and what this farm is about, feel free to subscribe and hit that bell icon so you get notified every time I post a video. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.